Hello, this is Aaron with iBoard Data Recovery. Uh, today in front of me I have an iPhone 13 Pro that's very, very smashed. It's in here for data recovery and in today's video I want to show you the process of how I figure out all that's wrong with this phone and how I pull the data from it for the customer. I've already taken my first diagnostic step with this phone which is to remove the screen and observe the amp draw from my DC power supply when I prompt the phone to boot. Um, so I'll show you that process here. This is my iPhone 13 Pro motherboard. This is where the battery plugs into. I could take my DC power supply probes here, set them to the voltage that the battery would be, which is about four volts. I will then put the positive in on the positive side, the negative on the negative. And when I press the power button, you can observe the amp draw here. Not much happens. Sometimes it stays flat zero. Sometimes it gives you that small little spike, that 0 0.05 I saw. So that tells me a couple of things. That tells me the phone is not, you know, there's there's an ab abrupt stop to the boot sequence. So that's usually, it could be from a few things. It could be from a shorted component, a shorted line on the motherboard, um, or it could be from uh, like missing coils, like the boost coil could be loose. Um, it could be a lot of things. So the first step I need to do is I need to pull this motherboard out of its housing, and then I need to separate the two halves of the motherboard so I can see the, the inner component. So let's get started with that process. Okay, so I have this motherboard out of the housing and I know that it's not getting its uh, full startup boot sequence. It's, it's uh, stopping very quickly. Um, I, I very rarely know exactly what the problem is uh, right from looking at the DC power supply. I just kind of get a, an idea. Um, I think it's probably going to be like a missing boost coil, but it could be shorted power lines and before I split this this NAND power line I'm not sure exactly what line this is um, but this looks a little discolored and it's probably powering NAND so let's just measure it first to make sure that this isn't short in fact it kind of already looks short it might be so I'll take my multimeter probes and put it in a uh, diode mode, put the red probe on ground and the black on the line and it does look like I'm getting a short here. So I wasn't expecting this to, to be that easy. If this doesn't need to be split, the, the motherboard does look pretty good. Let me switch camera so you can see a little better. I was expecting this job to be very severe because of the damage to the housing, but this motherboard is looking pretty clean. It doesn't look too bent. It looks a little bit, but not too much. Um, but I didn't think there was going to be any way that I wasn't going to have to split this one. And I still might have to. There might be other problems on top of this, but this is a problem here, and I think it's, uh, I think it's this capacitor here on this line. That's uh, also the the other reason to really just take a good look at your motherboard. Like I was able to see that this one just looked just a little bit discolored. It may not even have shown up very well in the um, in the video. But when you look at motherboards as often as I have iPhone ones, um, like I start to just kind of get an eye for things that look a little bit wrong. So now if I measure that again, hopefully it won't be short, and nope, it's no longer short. So I'm just going to check the boot up sequence again and see if I'm getting a different amp draw now. So I will take my DC power supply probes again, touch them to the battery connector here, 
I don't actually need the power button. I could just short the power button with, or the power button lines with my uh, tweezers here. So I'll short these lines. And that's already looking like a, a more normal boot sequence. Yeah. Well, it was. Try that one more time. Yeah, this this looks like it's booting now. So I was really not expecting this to be an easy job. I thought this one may even have needed a CPU transplant. Um, so I'm really glad to see that it doesn't. I'm, I'm almost sure this phone is booting now. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to grab a good uh, battery charge port and screen and see if it's booting up. And uh, I'll be very excited to see if it is. Okay, so I have my battery screen and charge port. Let's see if it's booting up. So I'll plug in my lightning cable here. And we have an Apple logo. Great. So I think it's gonna boot. And uh, this goes to show the value of like a really good visual inspection. Um, it does take a lot of practice to be able to spot something that small like that quickly. Um, but this is booting up. And I'll be able to take data from it. I'm gonna unplug it for now because I don't have a computer available. But yeah, the... Um, the underfill on top of that capacitor looked a little discolored and it was also showing signs on my DC power supply uh, that could possibly indicate a shorted power rail. So those two things combined led me straight to that capacitor that was short. I was able to remove it and this phone booted right up. So people will sometimes message me and they'll give me a specific symptom like the 0.05 amp draw and they'll ask me what's wrong. Um, but like on this one, I, I didn't know what was wrong. I just have to look at the motherboard and sometimes the problem is right in front of you. Sometimes it takes a little bit more work. Um, but I have to start diagnosing in order to figure it out. I don't just know off of the DC power supply. Um, but anyways, this one was uh, um, not too bad. So I just finished the iPhone 13 Pro repair for data recovery. And I started working on my next job, which is an iPhone 13. And uh, it looks to have the exact same problem as the last phone. Well, not exactly the exact same problem, but the exact same symptom. So if I take my DC power supply probes here again, and I press the power button, I get nothing sometimes, and that quick 0 0.05 sometimes. Sometimes a 0 0.01 on this one as well, but sometimes a 0 0.05. Um, so this is, almost the exact same symptom and I'm wondering if it's going to be the exact same problem. Um, I don't know, it might be, but it, it could it could be completely something else, which is why I, I, emphasize, I emphasize that if you send me just like an amp draw and ask me to help you with your problem, like I can't really give you an answer. Um, if this one is still a NAND line that's shorted, that will be a little bit funny, but it doesn't have to be. So l let's see if we can figure this one out too. I'm going to check the same thing and see if it's the same thing first. So this one, the motherboard layout is just a little bit different, um, but still I have NAND right here and I have a lot of capacitors around it. So let's look at some of the power rails and see if any of them are shorted. Um, I could open up ZXW to see the specific lines, but I'll just measure each of them. I think that's quicker. Basically, I just need to find three different ones. They tend to have three power rails. So that's 0.25, that's gonna be normal enough. 0.25, that's the same line. So there's a short, another NAND short. 
short, short. So that's funny. Two recoveries in a row, both have a NAND short, one back to back. <coughs> this one was reported as a lot of heat on the phone when it went dead. She said it was like if you left it in the sun for a really long time. So apparently this gives a lot of heat, but I have another NAND short. Um, because I don't see any that look particularly bad, I'm going to figure out what line this is by checking on my board view software. And then we can inject voltage to see the, the specific line that's bad. So with our board view software opened up, I'll go over to iPhone 13 and uh, check what line that was. It was this set of capacitors. Oh, you know what, the iPhone 13 doesn't give us net name still, so I'm not quite sure what line this is. Um, but I can figure it out just from the pattern um, and looking at iPhone 12 because they have the same NAND. Uh, so if I see that the two opposite corners are both red with two grounds on one side and I go to iPhone 12 Pro. Let's see if we can find a comparison. The two corners ground on one side opposite. It's telling me that it's the 2V65, uh, 2V625 NAND line. Um, so that's, that's what line it is. That's fine. So I can inject 2.6 volts into that line and one of these capacitors is going to heat up. So let's do that. <laughs> so now that I know which line it is, I know what voltage to use. So I'll take my DC power supply probes here again. And this is the reason I like to use probes because I can set the voltage to whatever I want. So I'll set my DC power supply to three volts because, I'm sorry, to 2.6 volts because that's what the line can handle. Basically anything under two will be fine, so or 2.6 will be fine. So I'll, I'll set it to two because that's plenty. Um, I can grab my free spray. You know what, in fact, I'll grab my, uh, my thermal cam so we can see it light up even more clearly. So I have my thermal cam here. Connect it to my iPhone. So I'll connect my red probe to the line. This is at 1.7 volts now. Anything under 2.6 should be fine. Um, you can already see my, my hands affecting uh, the heat signature on here, but when I touch ground, you can see in the corner there a, capac a capacitor is heating up. So there's, I believe, two capacitors there. It's a bit hard to tell which one it is. Let's see if I zoom in if I get a better view. Now I'm a little bit more zoomed in. Let's see if it looks any different. So it's just really hot right there in the corner. So there's three capacitors right there and, it, and it's a bit hard to tell on the thermal cam which one it is. So I am gonna use free spray after all. When I take my free spray and I do that same test under the microscope. So there's, I think it was one, two, and three, or there's three right here, it's hard to tell. And while this is in the housing, it's not going to stay frozen very long. There's a lot of uh, thermal mass around here. A lot of heat sinks. But one of these will heat up faster than the other others. Let's see which one does. So it's clear it's the one on the very corner, this big one. So I'll remove that capacitor and this, this phone's going to be just like that last one. All I have to do is flick that capacitor off and this, uh, this phone's going to boot up and, and data's going to be available to take.
So it's funny because this one was a spontaneous failure. She didn't drop the phone. It didn't get water damaged. Uh, nothing happened to it. Um, the capacitor is just short on its own. The other one had a very heavy impact and that's what actually caused the shorted capacitor on that one. So they have the exact same symptom, the, the short 0.05 amp draw, um, the exact same problem, a shorted uh, NAND capacitor, um, different causes, but same solution. So I just went ahead and I, I popped off the capacitor right now. Um, I didn't realize I wasn't recording, so sorry about that. So I can show you again. My line is no longer short. So I was measuring over here. I'll just do that again. If you hear it, there's just a beep now over here. Just a beep. And then that's a ground line, so it should, it's a long beep. But this is no longer short. So I have a screen here. Let's make sure it's booting. Um, this is the original screen. I don't think anything should be wrong with it. Sometimes the battery is fine when these shorts occur, which is a little funny to me. But let's just see if it boots up. It might need to charge. It might just boot. It needs to charge. I have a battery here. I can just make sure it's already good. Okay, with a good battery, it's booting up. I'm extremely lucky that both of these jobs were, were uh, that quick and simple. Um, but just because it's quick and simple for me doesn't mean that other technicians would be able to solve it so quickly. A lot of people will see a problem like this and they'll immediately split the motherboard before trying to do any diagnosis beforehand. Um, some people will even go straight to doing a CPU swap um, when it's not so simple or not as simple as like a VDD main short or something like that. Whenever it's anything more complicated, um, some technicians are more skilled with their hands and they'd rather just swap it out rather than uh, like find the problem on the board. <coughs> but this one's booting, so this is great. So thank you for watching this video and I, I uh, uh, appreciate you stopping by. So have a good one, bye-bye.